come in. Hello, Mark. sorry, the <laughs> clock's broken. I'm trying to. We, we noticed you hadn't changed it. Sorry. We could there start we that again. Hello, and welcome to Season 7, Episode 18 of the Ubuntu Podcast. In this episode, we'll interview Graham Binns from the Mars Project at Canonical, and we'll read your feedback. If you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat thing on the website and in the UPC IRC channel on Freenode. I'm Mark, and joining me remotely through the wonders of the internet are... Tony. Hello. Laura. Hiya. And, oh, Alan's not here. Oh, is he still on holiday? There's a big empty sofa here. Yes. <laughs> With an Alan-shaped dip in it. In it. <laughs> yes. So hopefully that little hiccup there is the, the only uh, factor you'll notice of me being remote this time. Yeah. You're still not so well then. Uh, That's like I, a I whole I... other week. <laughs> <laughs> they do stick around think, these bugs, don't they? I think I'm on the mend. Good. Oh, good. Are you in quarantine? Uh, no longer. Oh, good, good, good. I'm allowed out of my bubble. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony, what have you been up to since last we spoke? Well, since last we spoke, um, a rather nice thing, actually. It was my mum and dad's Ruby wedding anniversary. Um, How many is Ruby? 40. Gosh. So that's quite good. And it's more than my age. So that's not so good. <laughs> um, no, it was really nice, actually. You know, lots of friends and family um, teamed up and, you know, gave them a bit of a bit of a a, a do um as they say my dad had a remote controlled wireless shark um Mm -hmm. which he flew around the hall uh, a flying remote control shark. yes yeah sort of airborne oh yes i've seen one of them yeah Yeah, i I, it wasn't what instinctively came to mind when you talk when you say ruby wedding anniversary um but it seemed to go down quite well lots of people uh, (laughs) it's not what springs to mind when you say remote control wireless shark either (laughs) But lots of people were enchanted by it. So who am I to uh, who am I to <laughs> comment? But yes, they're yeah. probably listening to this. So yes, happy anniversary, mum and dad. And how about you, Laura? Um, I finally upgraded my um, personal laptop to fourteen oh four last weekend. All go well. Uh, yes, it originally. Um, <laughs> well, I noticed your hesitation. Well, the uh, that went fine. The right. It's a, the Dell XPS 13 developer edition Ubuntu yes. pre-installed laptop and it was not 1204 and because it had to have lots of extra packages yeah. uh, provided by Dell um, and it's got a backported uh, kernel right? Um, and I think it was the backported kernel bit that meant that I either had to upgrade or I could just upgrade the kernel bit with this extra hardware support and I okay. figured, so I figured, nah, I'll just upgrade to 1404, not th- really thinking about it. And of course, because of, I think because there were all these extra Dell packages on in the first place, mm. that made the ordinary upgrade not work very well. So um, I managed to so get... Dell, a Dell providing updated packages for 1404 for the extra bits it needs? They're all in the repositories now. Oh, okay, brilliant. Yeah, so that was the thing. I think they had all these ones from the separate repository and they were all conflicting Ah, with the new ones. uh, Right, I see, yes. So I should have thought about that really, but um, yeah, I couldn't get the X part of the operating system to run. So I figured rather than faffing around for ages and probably because all these packages weren't working, I actually managed to just reinstall it. Uh, And that bit was fine. Copying copying data off and back and stuff wasn't quite so quick, but um, the actual installation was brilliant and it just works. Cool. Um, So, yeah. And then today I had the screen replaced. (laughs) What about you, Mark? Um, I rescued some Super Nintendo games. Um, There were... So sometimes around my area, people will leave stuff like on the grass verge outside their house, which they get rid of a sort of informal free cycle thing. And right, someone had left okay. a box containing a SNES and a load of old games out in the rain. So I figured that it was uh, unloved and uncared for. And uh-huh. they left some really classic games. So cool. I'm going to crack out my SNES from the loft when I get the chance, um, having verified that they're not full of water. One of them looks like the battery's leaked all inside it. Um, so I might have to replace that and clean it up a bit. But other than that, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's all games like the original Donkey Kong Country and The Legend of Zelda and a load of like really classic titles, which I never actually had. Tony's looking really excited about this. Yeah, I know all about those things. <laughs> He's um, not really. Next time, next time you're over, Tony, we'll have a game of Super Mario Kart. How about that? Okay, that sounds good. You can only play that on the <laughs> Nintendo Wii. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, right, okay, cool. Well, uh, sounds like everybody's been had a busy, busy week or so. Um, let's get on and talk to Graham Bins. <laughs> On the phone, we have Graham Bins, software engineer at Canonical. Hi, Graham. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Uh, we've spoken in the past about uh, work you've done. I think we talked about Launchpad, but you've moved on to different things now. I understand you work on Maz. Is that right? I do, yes. Right. So Maz, M-A-A-S. I'm yep. a complete idiot. Tell me what Maz is. Okay, so it, actually, I googled this before um, before you filmed. Hang on, that's, I, that's more research than we've done. <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't bode well. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to know if we were at the top of the list, and we are. But also, Google gives me the definition that Mars M A A S um, is a South African, presumably Afrikaans name for thick, naturally soured milk. That's not what I'm here to talk about, but I, I just find okay. it interesting. Um, I fear yeah, we so, may have the wrong podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, milk as a service, anyway. Um, <laughs> so Maz or Maz or Mars or however different people pronounce it, there is no canonical um, correct way of doing it. Um, no, that was a, not an intentional pun. Is it stands for metal as a service? Is this uh, John um, Bacon's new band? Though? Which basically means that we can take using Maz, you can take hardware servers, a rack of servers, two racks of servers, however many you happen to own, and um, start treating them as though they were machines in the cloud. So you can start uh, spinning up machines as you need them, deploying workloads onto them, and then when you're done with them, uh, tear them down until the next time you need them, do something else. That's the, the quick version. Right. So, you know, you could you could probably already do that with other software. What 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 does what's the unique selling point of Maz that you know, I, I know I know there are data centers around the world that have servers in them where there are workloads on them. <laughs> and I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that happened before Maz. So what, what's the USP of Maz? The USP of Maz is that it actually the real USP of Maz is the fact that it talks the juju. If we to to overstretch a metaphor to the point where it's about to snap, um, Maz is the device driver to Juju's operating system. So um, just what one Ma moment where we think we're, 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 we're processing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did say it was overstretched. Right. So, um, so the difference between, say, using the, really to get the best out of Maz, you need Maz plus Juju. Um, and the difference between using Maz and Juju versus, say, um, a bunch of um, chef scripts or, or puppet scripts or what have you um, is is the fact that. Juju allows you to consider services rather than individual units. Um, Maz provides a huge amount of automation to abstract away the fact that you're dealing with different hardware architectures, um, different disk sizes, and so on. So when Juju asks for a machine, or when you know Maz has an API, so it doesn't have to be Juju that uses it, but um, when someone asks for a machine, they say, I, I need a machine and it has to have this much RAM and this much, this much disk space. Maz is responsible for finding that machine out of all the machine, the pool of machines that are available um, and starting it up and returning it to you and saying, there, there you go, you can do with it what you like. Now, Juju on top of that then allows you to deploy the workloads. So it's actually, it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. Um, I would, being on the Maz team, I would love to say that it's all Maz, but the, the magic really happens as a combination of the two. So um, I, I'm still in my head, I'm not quite able to conceptualize it. How, so how does it either differ from or relate to or form part of something like OpenStack? Okay, let's, uh, well, a, a great example of this actually is the, uh, are you familiar with the canonical orange boxes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the orange box is 10 uh, Intel next unit of computings, next yeah. units of computing. Um, <laughs> And the way that Maz would work there is that it sits on one of those nodes, okay. node zero, yeah. and it knows about all the other nine. Mm -hmm. It knows their hardware specs, it knows their MAC addresses, it knows how to turn them on, turn them off, um, and it knows whether they've been assigned to a user, what have you. Using Once you've got that set up and you've got Juju set up to talk to that Maz instance, what you can say 
using Juju is essentially Juju deploy open stack. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but for the sake of a quick hand wave. Um, and then what Juju does is it goes away and it says, well, I need one machine for this, please, Maz, and I need another machine for that, and I need this spec here. And um, Maz is responsible for starting those machines up and saying, yep, there you go, Juju. And Juju can then do the work of deploying stuff onto them. Um, now, the upshot of that is, as uh, Mark Shuttleworth demonstrated at the last OpenStack Summit, um, using a combination of uh, Mars and Juju, you can actually dis deploy an entire OpenStack on one of those orange boxes in about 25 minutes. Right. So you, you're starting from... Uh, okay, you, you've got a, a head start in that one of the nodes is already installed with, for example, Ubuntu and Maz, so you're not going completely from zero, are you, in, in 25 minutes? Um, no, but in actual fact, the, from the point of installing Maz to having a working Maz cluster, um, with, the, <laughs> with the exception of having to download boot images, which takes a while because um, we, we have to um, boot the nodes once with an ephemeral instance of Ubuntu that we then throw away, that just, just so that we can inventory them. Um, with the exception of that, you can get from an installed Ubuntu to a running Maz cluster probably within half an hour very easily. So, so you said you, you boot um, Ubuntu on them ephemerally to, to yep. audit them. So, yes. So in the orange box, you've got one node that is the controller that, that has all the brains, and then you have the other bunch of machines which are... Which are initially are blank and you've what pixie booted them uh and they net boot and install it runs it gathers information and then feeds that back to the maz controller that has a database of these are all the nodes that i know about so that when you come along and want to deploy a workload it knows what nodes are around yes yes huh I think exactly that's that, that is exactly what happened i think he's got it man <laughs> yes the, the sound of the other shoe um... so is it hold on a minute <laughs> So if you've got a uh, Maz, is that is it like virtualization but plus a lot more management or is it it's it it really depends. When Maz is working properly, you should never have to know about it. Right. That's it's one of the things. It is a it is a bit like virtualization, except that um we're not we, you know, you're using real machines. Uh so it, it will provide you with it provides exactly the same things as virtualization does so you can say i need a machine with this specific set of parameters um and of course in really complex data centers that could also mean i need a machine that has this kind of cpu or this many cpus and it needs to have this much disperse and it needs to have this much ram and it needs to be on this virtual network right and maz will take care of all of that so when uh, going back to the the question of virtualization, you know, I I would envisage someone has you know, one or more servers, and they might install something like Zen or VMware or something in order to get or use KVM in order to partition that that single piece of tin into multiple machines into which they can deploy different workloads at, at different times. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you saying Maz is only going to deploy one workload to one physical machine at a time? Um, and I, I can't carve it up in the same way that I could with with one of the virtualization options. In actual fact, you can. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what virtualization options we support. Uh, but what Maz can do, for example, although it can't do power control on uh, on LXC containers, it can know about them because they're just another MAC address on the network. Right. So um, if you want to carve up a machine, you can have you can allocate that machine to yourself, set up the containers on it, and then tell Maz about the containers. And Maz will know about the containers, and when Juju asks for stuff, or when you request a machine in your, you know, whatever script you happen to be writing, um, you can get one of the containers back. So you can carve up workloads in that way if you choose to. And does it know that it's a container on a physical host, and that, you know, if I throw all the workload at these 10 VMs or containers, they're all going to be, you know, killing one host rather than spreading them out nicely? It doesn't, but that's something that we we're hoping to work on um, either in this development cycle or the next. Yeah, you, so should, our, you should get on that. That would be good. Yeah, our, our, <laughs> our main focus for the next two cycles is robustness, um, and uh, that's one of those things we would we would love to 
we 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 have a kind of philosophy of we can't because we're we're producing a tool for sysadmins at the end of the day and sysadmins being almost uniformly a very smart bunch of people um we can't we we can't protect them in the same way that most software can protect its users from shooting themselves in the foot uh because they're going to want to do things that are inherently dangerous like destroy a machine yes exactly right um but we we are one of the things that we want to do is is make Mars uh, a more robust in the face of failure because occasionally right now um, it it isn't. Um, but also we want to put safeguards in place so we, you know we can essentially have the the sysadmin say I want to deploy this workload. Um, it is the the equivalent of saying uh, I want to do this minus minus yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> So once I, once I've got my workload deployed, let's say for example I've got one of those funky orange boxes, and I've yep. deployed a workload, and then I want to send it somewhere else, like into the data center, rather than because this this orange box has got to go back, and uh, you know I want to do it for real. I've I've done my development. I want to push it somewhere like sane. You know, am I talking? I have to go and get a bunch of machines in my data center, or can I can I throw that workload at? Like Amazon EC2 or HP or Azure or something. Do I or do I have to have physical hardware? This is this is where the the magic of Juju comes in because you would you would be building your workload using Juju. Um, so Maz is literally giving is all that Maz is that Maz cares about is giving you back the hardware that you need, and you do all of the orchestration work in Juju. Um, one of the most disappointing not disappointing, but most annoying things when I'm talking about this stuff is that Juju used to be called Ensemble and orchestration and Ensemble go really well together. And Juju is all about magic. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's not, it, it's, I don't think it's magic, but it's very, very cool. And what would happen is you would, uh, you sort your workload out, you get it working, you tune it exactly how you want. You can then from Juju save what's called a bundle, which is essentially a set of scripts that tells Juju how to set this workload up. Right. And then you can use Juju uh, in, I think we pretty much support every cloud going. Um, I know that we, we certainly support Amazon, Azure, um, HP Cloud, and um, I can't remember other things that it works on. But um, you could then throw that bundle at Juju in another cloud and it should just spin up. Or you could set up your own private cloud and throw it at that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this, and when you're setting up your own private cloud again, using Maz to inventory the hardware and and um, and the virtual machines that you've got it carved up into is is the way that you would make it all sit together. Okay, so this all sounds awesome in a hypothetical situation, and you know the, the, <laughs> it does all sound very magical, right? Yeah. Are people actually using this? And what are the what kind of workloads? What are they actually using it for? People are actually using it. Yay! Um, there, there are some we there are some that we can't talk about for um, for various reasons, um, all of which are in very very small print and in language that I don't really understand. Um, but yeah, people people are using it. Um, it tends to get used. Uh, Maz and Juju tend to get used um, in well. There's pretty much every single possible every single workload that i've heard of so far has had has been has had to do with big data um okay so, so hadoop and that kind of stuff yeah exactly um uh, doing terror sorts and so on um but also we're starting to hear a lot now about interest from telecoms okay. um for the combination of uh Maz and juju because they are now moving into a cloudy kind of space for providing their services um and Juju and Maz gives them real flexibility with the hardware that they've got. So, it, you know, you're, you're talking about big data, like large companies with large volumes of data. How how can you, when you're developing Maz, how do you replicate that? Do you have like, you know, I mean, before the orange box existed, you know, you just have a bunch of old PCs hooked up together, or do you <laughs> do you have a data center in your house, Graham? Like, I, how I, do you do I, this? I do not have a data center. I, actually, we the, our test rigs at the moment are um, like a scaled down version of the orange boxes. Um, but the way that we have we have tested sort of big data workloads and things uh, on Juju and Maz has been using uh, canonical hardware uh, provided by our, our lovely and wonderful IS team, um, led by the estimable James Troop. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we have a we we have access to quite a lot of different types of hardware. Um, the the ones that we're we're testing out on a lot are uh, fairly bog standard servers, uh, so just you know Intel x86 boxes with a um with a bmc attached so that we can do power control but we also test things out on um c micro clusters and uh such like um and it's actually running mas um and having mas handle your server properly is now part of canonical certification process so oh. um, if you if you bring out some new server hardware um we we want to see that maz can deal with it properly and if if it doesn't deal with it properly then we'll either fix maz or in future if it's if it's something that you know the the uh device not the device the hardware manufacturer should have done in the first place then um we'll we would say to them yeah we can't certify this as it is so if because... it's, it does sound like you you can go from like something as small as a nook mm -hmm. up, up to you know big data centers full of Lots of machines. Are there, yes. are, there, are there any like extreme limitations on like how many machines on the network you can discover and manage, or what, what limitations have you found with it so far? Like the, ba we, the boundaries. We haven't found. We haven't found the limitations yet. Uh, I can't remember the. the have you looked the, under the sofa? <laughs> um, we have. What I, what I would love to do is um, I, one of the things that I would love to do is just get somehow connect loads of c micro clusters and orange boxes and just racks of stuff all together and power them on i should imagine that when you do that because mars is kind of um um it's a slightly modular architecture so you have a a region controller that on, sits on the top and that provides the web interface and the api um and then you have cluster controllers that talk to the region controller and the cluster controllers manage a set of nodes um and i should imagine if you connected you know the the machines of uh, everybody plus dog to a cluster controller and then turn them all on at the same time uh the cluster controller and the region controller would fall to their knees fairly quickly right. um so we one of the things that we're going to be doing as part of the robustness work is stress testing it essentially cool and so and this is all free software what's it written in um maz is written entirely he says thinking about it in python um with I think we've I think we've gotten rid of all the bash that was in there. There was some horrific walls of bash that we had we spent a long time getting rid of. Um, it's yeah, it's all Python. It's um, Python and Django for Django provides the the framework for the web stuff uh, for the web stuff and the data model and such like. Um, occasionally that causes us to run into some grief because it wasn't really designed for this kind of application, but it it works very well ninety nine percent of the time. Um, Juju is written in Go, um, which is uh, a wacky, fun language that <laughs> doesn't quite fit in my head. Um, and the, uh, the the bit of the the, the API, uh, sorry, the bit of Juju that talks to the Maz API, that's also written in Go. That's a separate project called Go Maz API. And all of these things are on Launchpad, I guess. They are indeed, yeah. And it's all free software. Yeah. Awesome. Amazing. Where can people go to find out more? Um, well, you can, if you go to launchpad.net slash Maz, you can get the you can get the code there. Um, to find out more, visit Maz. That's M A A S dot Ubuntu dot com. Cool. Magic. Thank you very much, Graham. Yeah, thanks Lovely for talking to us, Graham. Take okay. care. Cheers then. Bye. 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 It's time for a command line love. And uh, this one was submitted by a listener, Tor Gausen, who was written in to tell us about the command RL wrap. That's RL wrap. Mark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark, please tell us what this means. Yeah, so it took me a while to work out what this actually does. So imagine you have a command where you run the command and it then gives you a prompt for some input and okay. you type some text. And then you type the wrong thing and then you press the left key to go back and then it inserts a load of escape characters and then you fail miserably and you hit control C and start again. Happens every day. Yes. So what you could have done there is you could have preceded your command with RL wrap, which then wraps it using GNU readline, which then gives you 
better line editing so it means that you can do things like navigate it with the keys and press up and down to scroll back through history and things like that okay so it sort of replaces the entry bit of the program with a better one yes pretty much okay what are the useful ways you could use that other than the things you described <laughs> if you don't have um, nano on your system <laughs> Uh, well, it's not really. It's not really a replacement for a, a text editor. Yeah. It's really. It's for when you're inputting, inputting text into a into a prompt in a command line utility. Yeah. Okay. So, like you know, I've written a um, a script which reads in various bits of text for doing various jobs. Like it's a DVD ripping thing, which then asks you which chapters you want to rip and so on. And so it could be useful for enhancing the prompts in that. Um, mm, but there's there's a few examples that Tor's given us, um, such as uh, <laughs> oh, you can so um, so you can use the the history from a previous session as well by giving it the flag dash h. So if you're knocking together a quick and dirty bash script, you could call either your whole bash script, I guess, or bits of a bash script using RL wrap and, and make it a bit more user friendly. Yes. Interesting. So there's a link that Tor has sent us, which we'll put into the show notes, um, and then you can find out a bit more about how to use RL Wrap and how to make it work for you. That's the end of the command line, love. Now it's time for your feedback. Um, we've got an email from Jaina or Jana in Bangalore in India who started listening or is actually regular listens now to the podcast, um, mostly offline when it, um, when the during a commute to the office. I really love the Ubuntu podcast. I love Ubuntu and find this podcast is the best on this topic. Also, you cover the breadth of it with all topics related to Ubuntu and not just Ubuntu. And now, for the weirdest reason uh, why I like the podcast, I find your laughs not irritating. <laughs> uh -oh. That's a good, um, yeah, it's a good praise. reason to listen. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hear other podcasts like Twit. What's that one? Twit. This, this week, week in tech, tech. and uh, or this week in Google, and they laugh so much. But I might not get the American joke or phrase, and I'll be like, "What was that?" So your podcast is really soothing to my ears and pleasant. Oh, that's well, really nice, nice to hear. Yeah, nice. it's always nice to hear from people who listen around the world as well. Yeah, it makes it really weird yeah, for us. Yeah, it's but really, it's, it's really, really cool. cool. Yes, I do always make the effort when someone makes me laugh not to laugh directly down my microphone. Yeah, and I think it worries me that that yeah I'm bursting some poor listener's eardrums in the process. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> yeah, and it's good that somebody doesn't find our laughs irritating. So. <laughs> and Mike Bartosh emailed in. I just joined the Ubuntu 12.04 crew this year and I'm loving it. Really easy to use and so far it does everything I've wanted, including running Oracle XE, Tomcat and Eclipse. You were discussing alternatives for Ubuntu 1 a wee way back, but no one mentioned Grive, which is Ubuntu's answer to G Drive. I've installed this and it works well. It saved me having to have another account with another provider and yet another password. Okay, so G Drive presumably is the thing that allows you to use your Google Drive for storing stuff. Yes. And, and uh, Grive is a, a, an open source client for syncing files with Google Drive on Ubuntu ah. and other Linuxes. Yeah, I don't think we did mention that. So thanks no, for emailing didn't. in, Mike. Um, and it, it's, a good, it's a good point as why he wants to use it because, I mean, pretty much everybody has a... Uh, a Google account for one reason or another. So it is yeah. kind of handy just to be able to not have to go to another service and sign up with them. Yeah. You can just say, oh, I'll use that, so that login I've already got and you've got all the space. Yeah, nice one. Thank you, Mike. And Dr. Jellyface said on Twitter, I'd like to say hello. That well, was, hi, that was Dr. It. Jellyface. Hi, Dr. Nice Jellyface. I wonder if that's uh, his real name and I wonder if he's a genuine medical doctor. Or she. Mm. 
Or Let she. us know. Yes, this is true. I assumed, didn't I? I'm naughty. Jellyfish is such a masculine name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, perhaps Dr. Jellyface could let us know and confirm one way or the other. Um, yeah. Anyway, and, uh, if you if you are a medical doctor, uh, I've got this this thing on my back which I could really do with you. Uh, with Please, can me. we stop? Ew, <laughs> quite disgusting. Um, that's the end of your feedback, thankfully. The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that enthralls, exasperates or elevates you, tweet at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. Please do get in touch. I mean it. Just one message. Just to know there's someone out there who cares. And that's all for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. Our next show will be on Wednesday, the 6th of August at half past eight in the evening. Is evening that, time. Is that PM? UK. PM. <sighs> half eight PM local time UK. Yes. In the that, evening. Yeah. Yes. 2030. Standard by five. Standard by five. Isn't that a speed? Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Well, thank you for joining us, Mark. For, from How your... many parsecs is it? Uh, it's I don't know I, the Kessel Run I don't know there's a geek reference in Wasn't, there somewhere did I hear it Alan earlier uh, ah yes you did you did hear Alan you might have hit on our uh, little secret <laughs> where is he <laughs> Aren't we supposed to have stopped talking by now? Yeah, a long time ago, but that's fine. Um, yes, yeah, so you might have heard in our little uh, interview segment that we did earlier with Graham Bins, um, one Mr. Alan Pope um, that has given away the fact that that interview with Graham was actually recorded um, last uh, during the last live episode, wasn't it? And yes. we kept it back. We were so excited to be able to talk to you, we kept it back for another couple of weeks. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hence Alan being in it. Um, but hopefully Alan will be back actually with us in person, filling his gap in the sofa uh, in the way only he can uh-huh. uh, for the next live shows, which are in just two, two weeks. weeks if you're listening live, or One week. six or six days if you're listening to the download on the day it was released. Which one? This one. <laughs> oh yeah, this one. <laughs> right, it's definitely time for us to go. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.